What is one thing that you and I and pretty much everybody else has in common? We all want to make the best decisions with our money, especially when it comes to expensive things. Well, exactly six years ago, I did something crazy and spent more money than I ever thought I would on a car, but not just any car. This is the car that flipped the auto industry upside down and brought electric vehicles to the masses. I'm talking about the Tesla Model 3, of course. I just passed 144,000 miles in my Model 3, and you might be thinking, Andy, that is a random number. Why are you telling me that? Well, that number is important because the average US driver drives about 14,000 miles per year. So that means I've driven the equivalent of 10 years of average driving already in the Model 3. And if you listen to any financial expert, they always say that 10 years is the minimum you should own a car if you're buying it brand new. I'm gonna share with you every single dollar that I spent on my Model 3, including all the repairs, all the maintenance. I'm also gonna go over the savings that I've had by not buying gas or oil. First, let's quickly go over the upfront cost of my Model 3. When I got this in 2018, it was $56,000 for this configuration with the red paint, long range, enhanced autopilot, and I added full self-driving for $2,000 when they offered it in 2019. So including my taxes and registration, and then also minus the $7,500 tax credit that I got, I ended up paying $54,000 after all that. So let me go over the optional expenses. Let me know if this bothers you in any way, if I just, if I just do that. First of all, the paint protection film, $1,800 to wrap the entire front of my Model 3, my fenders, my entire hood, the front bumper, and also my mirrors. For when I'm driving on the highway and rocks and stuff are flying, I don't have to worry about paint chips or anything like that. I also spent $200 roughly on getting all four windows tinted. What this does is not only add some privacy, but keeps the car from becoming too hot in the hot summer days. So it allows me to save some energy that way. By uh, not having to turn on cabin overheat protection, I always leave that off. That helps out a lot and it just looks better. I've also spent roughly $200 on various different accessories for my car, including floor mats, cell phone mounts, console wraps, things like that. So I haven't really gone too crazy on the accessories. However, I did spend $500 on the Uniden radar detector. I got one speeding ticket every year for the first three years of ownership, but I ended up getting this radar detector. It's been worth it because I, ever since I've gotten it, I haven't been pulled over, it works great. And last but not least for the optional expenses, $500 deductible whenever I got my bumper replaced. Something flew up and hit the bumper. The windshield has also been replaced twice. Luckily, I live in a state where it covers it completely for free, so I haven't spent anything on windshield replacements. So in total, about $3,200 that I spent on optional expenses. Now let's talk about free service that has been performed by Tesla for things that have gone bad when it was under the warranty. First of all, the door handle it would get stuck like this. They had to fix that twice. Uh, that was the first problem. And then the other door issue with this door was it was making this popping sound whenever I was opening it and closing it, especially it got worse in the winter time when it was colder. Another problem child of this car has been the LTE signal. I've lost it twice. The first time was they came out and covered under the warranty, replaced the connectivity board. Second time it was outside of my warranty, but they fixed it for free under the FSD computer warranty. And the last two free repairs done by Tesla was one was a, a GPS discrepancy error. I was getting an autopilot system error because my GPS was off. And the last thing that they did for free was actually considered goodwill service. It was outside of the warranty, but they did it for free. I basically had this scraping noise whenever I was turning. There was a huge stick lodged under my car. They removed it for free and uh, didn't charge me things, so I appreciate that. So as you can tell by now, I'm all about owning my Tesla for a very long time, which is why I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Amber, who shares the same goal of promoting longer and more sustainable usage of electric vehicles by being the new solution for EV extended warranties. As a Tesla owner, I know how great it is to have a car that doesn't need a lot of ongoing maintenance, but I also know that out of warranty Tesla repairs can be quite expensive due to specialized parts and service. But Amber is here to bring peace of mind to Tesla owners like me and you when the manufacturer's warranty runs out. Now, unlike the outdated extended warranty market, Amber offers reliable protection designed in consultation with EV repair experts to protect you against unexpected breakdowns with three different Amber Care coverage options to choose from. Their basics is similar to Tesla's basic vehicle limited warranty. Their essentials covers the battery, drive unit, and other high voltage components. And their premium is the top tier coverage that comes with 
all the benefits of basics and essentials. Amber care plans start from just $40 per month and are currently available in 10 states with more states being added, and they will begin to cover other EV brands very soon as well. The extended warranty market remain unchanged and has poor customer reputation, but Amber approached this market with a customer first approach and is committed to offer modern, reliable protection. Start protecting your Tesla today with Amber Care by clicking the link in the description below and use discount code SLY10 at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. Now, these are all the out of pocket costs after my warranty expired. First of all, it was a two year checkup. It cost me around $390 to do the two-year checkup. That's recommended, it's not required. And looking back, it's probably something that I could have just skipped. I also did a DIY uh, air filter replacement. You can do it yourself, it's really easy. It took me less than an hour. I ordered, I think it paid like $36, super cheap to do that. And then going back to the problem child of the car, the driver door, the windows, the, win the window buttons got messed up. They were, were not working and they would roll them down and they were not rolled back up. So that cost $94 to get that repaired. A mobile technician came out and repaired that. Another relatively cheap repair was when my driver's seat sensor went out. It was basically not recognizing me in the seat and the, the screen would stay black when I got in and mobile technician came out and fixed that for, I think it was like $94. Another repair that the mobile technician did a couple years ago is when my 12 volt battery died. Luckily, Tesla has that preemptive warning so you can get that replaced ahead of time. But, and you actually can DIY that yourself, but I chose not to. And it was only like $100 for the mobile tech to come out and do it. So it wasn't that expensive. However, a very expensive repair that I did not think would be as expensive as it was, was when the charge port door, it wasn't automatically opening and closing. They came out and fixed that. And that was like three, over $300. That was not fun. Closing out the repairs, the most expensive repair, $1,000 to get the front control arms and the lateral links replaced. If you know anything about the early Model 3s, it's almost a guarantee that your control arms will need to be replaced. It's just a matter of when. There is that recall out there and I, I actually messaged that to the Tesla service team. I was like, hey, is this covered under the warranty or the, or the recall? And they said, no, unfortunately it's not. So that brings my total out-of-pocket cost for the expired warranty repairs and service to about $2,000. Really not that bad. And as far as tires go, I've spent about $2,700 on two sets of brand new tires, along with a few tire rotations and a couple of blowouts that I've had to replace. So that is actually not too bad, considering that EVs are usually known for eating up tires because of how heavy they are and the instant acceleration. I usually get my tires from Tire Rack. I'll leave a link to those in the description below. Now let's talk about one of the best things about owning a Tesla, the charging costs. Most likely it's gonna be way cheaper than buying gas. And I live in a state where electricity is super cheap. I'm literally just charging in my garage overnight when electricity is the cheapest. And it costs about eight cents per kilowatt hour to do that. And 95% of my charging has been done at home. So my Model 3 says it has consumed 36,482 kilowatt hours to travel over 144,000 miles. So 95% of that is home charging, which comes to about 34,658 kilowatt hours of home charging. And we times that by my electricity rate of eight cents per kilowatt hour. That brings my total home charging costs to about $2,772. The other 5% of my charging was done at superchargers on road trips, which comes to about 1,824 kilowatt hours. It is about 32 cents per kilowatt hour at the superchargers near me. So I'm gonna use that as the estimated cost. So my estimated total supercharger cost has been $583 so far. Now I actually have not paid that in supercharger costs. That's just estimated. I actually have free supercharging through the referral program. And then the last bit of my charging cost that I have to add in is when I had to install a NEMA 1450 outlet in my garage to charge my Model 3. It ended up costing me about $900 out of pocket for that NEMA 1450 outlet. So that brings my total charging cost to about $4,255. And the final cost that we need to figure in are the insurance and registration costs. So insurance, I pay about $100 a month, roughly. And then registration, I pay about $350 per year. So both of those combined total has been about $9,000. So that brings my total ownership cost so far after six years and 144,000 miles to just over $75,000. But remember the mileage is what a typical driver would drive over the span of 10 years. So what do you think about that? Does that sound good to you? Now, let's also compare it to what it would cost me in a comparable gas car. So uh, the BMW 3 Series is what a lot of people com consider to be the gas competition equivalent to the Tesla Model 3. In 2018, the BMW 3 Series gets about 27 miles per gallon and the BMW requires premium gas. 
I looked up the premium gas right now in my city and the average is about $4.24 per gallon. That brings the total gas cost for the BMW to over $22,000. And if we add on roughly $1,000 estimated cost for oil changes, that brings it to nearly $20,000 difference. $20,000 in savings by not buying gas or oil. And if you think about it, you know, the potential $19,000, $20,000 savings I've saved so far, every single expense that I've put into my Tesla, it all covers everything just from the fuel savings alone. I don't know about you, but that sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Love this car. I'm going to keep driving it. I'm going to drive it to the wheels fall off, hopefully. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Andy. If you want to see more Tesla and tech videos in the future, be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you in the next one. That was very fast. Wow.